What's up everybody, my name is Brendan and this is Big Bear Be Creative. Welcome back everybody to another Sunday photo editing video. Obviously you saw in the, in the thumbnail what photo we're going to be editing today, but I'm just going to talk a little bit briefly about the photo and why it is we chose this specific one to do today. So if you watched Friday's video and I think a lot of people have. It's actually been, I think, one of the most um, quickly watched videos, I guess you could say, on, one, on my channel. The one that got the most views the quickest. Um, so if you subscribed, if you saw that video and subscribed, thank you. I think I had about three new subscribers just from that video. So let me know down in the comment section below if you're one of those three. I would love to talk to you guys and just thank you for joining. Um, but so on Friday, if you saw the video, uh, basically we talked about, it was kind of, again, one of those for beginners, but it's something every photographer kind of needs to just re-up on a little bit. And that was one of the three pillars of photography, talking about shutter speed. It was a full tutorial all, all about basically everything you would need to know about shutter speed. And in that video, I had talked a little bit about some of the photos that I was showing to give examples of settings and kind of the looks that they give. I talked about that I had blended some photos with multiple different shutter speeds to get the final photo that I had shown. So today we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how I do that. I'm gonna take a couple different photos, blend them together to get that final photo that I had showed you guys in the last video. So if you don't know anything about shutter speed or you don't feel like you know everything that you should know or you just kind of want to re-up on all of that information, all that, make sure you guys check out Friday's video. I'll link it in the card above. So let's get in. We're going to jump on over to my computer. Well, I'm at my computer, but we're going to pull up my computer screen. I'm going to show you guys the photos we're going to be using to make the final photograph today, and then we'll get to the full-on editing portion. So let's, let's, get the, let's get that started. All right, so now that we're over to my computer, you can see I have a bunch of photos here. And as you can tell, a lot of them look very similar. They're all of very similar compositions. They're, they're the same compositions, but obviously different um, compositions in there. This is getting confusing. You can see I took a lot of photos looking at the same thing, and that's because this was basically a waterfall shoot that I had went on. So as I talked about earlier in this video, the way that you capture these to where you're getting the correct exposure for like the sky, and for the water to get that long exposure water effect is you have to take multiple photos and you're gonna blend them together. So today we're gonna to be going with one of my favorites from the shoot and that is this uh, three set here. Now we're not gonna use all three photos. This one's just gonna use two photos. Sometimes when you do take photos like these, you need to take three because let's take a look at like, yeah, this is, we'll just take a look at these top ones here. So for example, with the uh, rock cliff waterfall looking one. You can see I have three exposures. I have one that it's a, that's exposing for the sky, I have one that's exposing for the cliff here, and then I actually have one that's exposed for the water effect that I want. So I, here as you can tell by the icon, I don't really know, the slider icon I guess you could say, um, that that one's edited, that's final, and that's the one that I had stacked all three of those on and blended them together. So I'm going to show you how I did that using these ones down here. And this is Luminar 3, if you're cur curious about what photo editor I'm using. They recently had another one that came out with Luminar 4 that's available. Um, but if you're using Luminar 3, Lu Luminar 4, even if you're more of a Photoshop or anything like that, it's going to be the same kind of techniques that you're going to use. It all has to do with brush masking just sometimes different ways you import the other images and all stuff will be a little different. So now that the photo is finally loaded, uh, basically whenever you're doing a photo blend, you want to take your base photo is going to be the photo that you're going to have the most of. So in this, in this case, I'm only going to be bringing in a photo to blend the water. So the majority of the rest of it is all going to be this photo, which is why I chose this photo. So. For Luminar 3, you're just going to hit this plus icon up in the top uh, top right area and you're just going to click add new image layer. Then it'll bring up all the images in whatever folder you have open. Um, for this one, I am going to be using this image and just click open. Now unfortunately, Luminar 3 doesn't have a auto stacking to where it's going to match the photos exactly, which is why when you're taking the photo, and I had mentioned in Friday's video, you need to shoot on a tripod. That way you can make sure that your composition is exactly the same. All you did is just change your shutter speed and then take the photo again. So, all right, so now this one is o uh, open. It's going to show whatever the top layer that you had just put on. So I put that new layer, which has the water effect that I want. It's going to pull that up on top. All you have to do is go click on this brush button and it's going to come up with a brush, brush, 
a brush mask, um, a radial mask, gradient mask, luminosity mask. Now, luminosity mask can be really great, and a lot of people do like using luminosity masks. Um, for this one in particular, because there's just certain areas that I want to have it, I'm just going to use my own brush. So I'm just going to click on the brush for the mask, and then I'll put it in myself. Luminosity mask is basically going to either put it all over the highlight, so it's going to auto mask for you. Basically, it's going to do the brushing for you with different gradients and basically opacity uh, as to how much is going to come through at certain areas. The reason that I don't want that is because, like I said, it's just the water. So. Whenever you do start masking, it's going to change back to that bottom layer and then you'll, it'll just show you brushing, brushing in the uh, new one. So as you can see here, I'm just going to be brushing in the uh, top layer. And it's okay if you go over a little bit from where you're actually wanting it to because you can just go back later, touch it up more, do some um, erasing of the mask, I guess. It's not, I guess that's, that's actually what it's called. Um, I'm just going to come through and just kind of brush in all the spots that I want the water. And then we'll go into, which I'll show you in a little bit, I'll go into how you could kind of fix, obviously the big difference here between where the uh, top mask layer is and where the bottom mask layer is because of that brightness that we're seeing. Um, there's an easy fix you can go through for that and it's just gonna be basic editing like, like what you normally do. So as we can see here, it's looking really nice. I really like the effect that we're getting here from the water. Like I said, this was what I was going for. Obviously the only, I guess you could say, issue is gonna be just trying to get rid of that haloing effect that's happening with where we actually have the brush mask layer on. And then you could also just come up here, click this little eye button, it's going to show you uh, where you're brushing the mask. So if you missed any spots like I did here, you go through. I'm gonna add it over here and then I'm gonna click it off. I just kinda wanna see what that was doing. That really made much of an effect really is what I'm looking for. I actually kinda like that off a little bit. So I feel like it's a little distracting from what the main look of this waterfall is and that's the actual large fall that's coming off. So like I said, I'm just gonna go through and kinda clean up, mask a little bit. Make sure that we're only getting in what it is that I want in or what it is that you would want in, in the case of your own photos. Looks like go ahead and click on that eye again just so we can kind of see where all the mask is. I want to take it off there a little bit. Bring down that. Bring that down a little bit. And then we can go ahead and click this different eye button. I really like eye buttons in Luminar 3. Um, you can see the big difference here, what the base layer is, the exposure for the rocks, and then the exposure I took for the water itself. So now that we have all that done, that's, that's what I was wanting in the actual photo itself, the final photo. So just click done, it'll process it and all that. It shouldn't take long. So now that you finally have that final blended that's all the blending that we're going to do that's all you need to do to actually blend these together it's very simple very easy but now comes the actual part of editing the photo and that's all done through either clicking on this well not either you will need to do this you'll click again on that plus and you're going to add a new adjustment layer now this adjustment layer is what you're actually going to do your editing on so i'm just going to choose my custom workspace that has all the different edits that i like using um, in Luminar 3 there's going to be your base ones which are these, it's going to be in all the Luminar 3's and then you could create your own and have that be your typical one that you use. So I've already created mine, as you can see I titled it the name of my branding I guess you could call it. Um, so that's going to be where we do all the basic edits. Now as I was saying earlier we kind of want to get rid of this effect where you can really see where I had brushed in over some rocks that's going to make the rocks look brighter than the other one. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back into the original layers or the original images that this, I guess, complex, not really complex, this dual image, I don't really know how to, this is this stacked image. So we're just gonna go into the original images and we're just gonna play a little bit with some of the highlights, maybe a little bit of the shadows. So I'm just gonna, eh, I don't wanna drop the highlights in this one because that's gonna mess with the water. So instead, let's try darkening some of the shadows just a little bit, just so we can try to balance these out a little bit. And then I could also come back into the very original uh, base image and just raise up the shadows a little bit. Unfortunately, in this one, it's not going to show us the what it will look like all together. So we'll just have to jump back over to that adjustment layer, 
and then you can see if the rocks look well blended. So to me, I mean, I think it looks pretty, pretty good. You don't really see much of any difference here. Maybe a little bit in this little spot here, but I kind of like that. It, I don't know, it just kind of seems like the, like the sun's coming off of it or anything like that. So now that we have that whole adjustment layer on, your different highlights or shadows have been adjusted to be more balanced. Now you can go through and actually finish and edit your photo like you would normally edit your photo. So we're just gonna go through this and I'm gonna try to just raise a little bit of the contrast here. Might lower the highlights a little bit and the whites a little bit, just to try to bring out a little bit more of the color that's actually in the water itself. Maybe it's add a little bit of clarity. The one thing that, well, this is one of, like I said, this is my favorite photo that I've actually taken on this trip. And I took this last week. This was a trip I did after, um, I'm trying to see, when did, when did I do? Was it, I think it was Sunday, it was Sunday morning last week. So uh, it was, it was a whole ordeal with last week. If you guys watched last week's photo editing video, it was really fun. I enjoyed that video. The editing por portion of that, oh. My, my computer couldn't handle it with the optical flow that I was doing for the slow motion. It was a bit chaotic. So I hope you guys liked that one. If you, if you haven't seen it, you should go check it out. Uh, it was fun. Basically what we did was our own landscape photos, or we made it look like we were taking landscape photos, but we used uh, all uh, home items, I guess you could say. I used like a fake plant and stuff like that to try to make it look like I was taking a photo of a fern out in the forest. So. It was pretty fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, I kind of keep that lower just so we're not losing the color of that waterfall here. You know, normally I use dehaze, but I don't like the dehaze slider in this particular image. Now I do want to boost uh, some saturation and some vibrance just because it's very colorful. Oh, yeah, back to what I was saying. I really like this photo. The only thing I don't like is you can tell up here someone had spray painted on the rock. And that was something that was all over this location itself was there was trash everywhere. There was, I mean, like beer cans, shoes, towels, graffiti everywhere. If you guys are going out and taking photos or just going out any anytime, don't be like these people and trash this place because things like this is actually very hard to find uh, around where I live. There's actually very few waterfalls, and the ones that we do have are typically very um, high tourist spots, I guess you could say. So finding locations that you could, I could go shoot, or that you guys could go shoot, where there's not a bunch of people, it's very hard. This one I had to actually get up at 5 in the morning, and we got there at about, I think it was like 6.40. So luckily there wasn't any people, but just so you could tell by all the trash around, that it's very high spot a lot of people like to go here but if you guys are going out don't leave trash everywhere don't spray graffiti it's, it's not good just don't do it it's not good for the environment it's not good to do by yourselves but it's enough of my <laughs> enough of my ranting um you guys can tell here i'm not trying to i'm trying to add a little bit of a vignette just to kind of again give it a little bit more focus to the waterfall itself uh, but this, like I said, this is a very simple edit. The, mo the majority of this photo is actually taken just in camera with the motion of the water. I'm just trying to make sure everything is well balanced. Oh, we don't need that. I'm just going to add a little bit of sharpening here. And just try to kind of bring out a little bit more structure of the rocks themselves. We can see what the photo that we originally started with and then this finished photo. So I'll flash this up on screen, give you guys a nice look, and then we'll go ahead and wrap this video up. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed this video on the process that we did here and that you learned a little something about how you can stack these shutter speeds and just kind of give you the correct look of the photo that you're going for without actually overexposing or underexposing or just having any of those things. So this goes along great with Friday's video. If you guys didn't watch Friday's video, I suggest go check it out. I teach you everything you need to know about shutter speed and it's very important when it comes to photography as it's one of the three settings that basically lets you take a photograph. So make sure you guys are checking that out if you haven't seen that or if you need to touch up a little bit on your shutter speed. So um, also make sure you guys are bear pawing that like button. 
last video we did great on that i really appreciate it make sure you guys are doing that again also make sure you guys are subscribed and like i said we do this kind of stuff every week next week we'll be finishing up with the iso portion of the beginners tutorial which is kind of uh i watched a video from um, photo tripper he was talking a little bit about that and kind of the ways that they describe iso is very funny um, so i might include a little bit of touch of that but yeah, so make sure you guys are subscribing for that. We're also going to do photo editing videos on Sundays. Although next week, next Sunday, it might be a uh, field photography trip. As soon as I'm done filming this and getting it quickly edited, I'm actually heading out to a, another photo shoot. Hopefully that goes well. If it does, you guys will be seeing that next Sunday. So again, make sure you're... Sorry. So, um, but like, like I said, we're gonna, you might be seeing that next Sunday if it goes well. So make sure you're subscribing for that. Also, make sure you're checking out some of the links down in the description box. That's where you can find some great links for my eco-conscious apparel that's one nature-based, also designed based off of helping nature as best as we can by using more eco-conscious uh, aspects, materials, stuff like that. So make sure you guys are checking that out if you're interested. You can also buy photo prints. This photo print is available. It's going to be found on my website. I'll sell it on a couple different other places. Well, they're sold through the other places, but I linked to them on my website. So make sure you guys are che checking that out. Also make sure that you're checking out my photography blog as well. It's basically every week I have a theme. So this week was shutter speed. So I go a little bit more in depth on that for you guys. So if you like reading, this might help you learn a little bit more. Go ahead and check that out. That's also linked down below. You can also find things from what songs I use. Also make sure you guys are checking out that gear list that's down there. If you guys are new to photography or just kind of wondering what gear I use, I have that all down there. I don't think they're linked to anything, but you could also just go to my website and towards the bottom, they're actually linked so you can go find the actual things that I'm using. So make sure you guys are checking that out if you're interested. Thank you for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Be safe during this time and go be creative. Thank you